Sonography of the Urinary Tract Technique, Normal Appearance and Variations Part 2 Covering the Ureter and Urinary Bladder In Part 1 I have covered the Kidney and the Renal Pelvis Now Ureter when it is dilated can be traced to the level and cause of obstruction as seen here you can see from the kidney the calyces are dilated you see the upper ureter is dilated and then you trace it and you see the mid ureter the pelvic crossing lower ureter dilated and when you see the ureter ending up to the bladder and there is a calculus at the uvj so that is how a dilated ureter can be traced but when the ureter is non dilated can it be seen and can it be traced Yes, is the answer how to start with it to start with it is better to start with a dilated ureter you see the course and um, how we have to move the transducer to trace the different parts of the ureter and also you can try with the um, ureter with a stent in place and then see the stent uh, in the renal pelvis in the upper ureter you can see the stent so you know now by tracing the stent a non dilated ureter so you can memorize the transducer movement to see the non dilated ureter upper ureter the mid ureter the level of pelvic crossing and then the lower ureter you see the stent in place and it see the stent actually entering the urinary bladder through the uterovesical junction so then you can see the stent in the bladder so with the stent in the ureter which is not dilated you can use the stent as a guide to trace the non-dilated ureter that will be shown in the video you can see the uh, stent in the pelvis upper ureter and you can they move the transducer as it was described in the basic lectures for tracing the iota so you see the stent and you see the undilated ureter various parts uvj and enter the bladder so this is the way to learn tracing and looking for a non-dilated ureter so here you see a non-dilated ureter the upper part you see the ureter and how to identify the ureter by the peristals you will see the ureter emptying collapsing so similarly the mid ureter you see the ureter and it collapses so the peristalsis confirms that you are definitely seeing the ureter so that was the mid ureter and you see the lower ureter filling up and then collapsing so filling up and collapsing so this helps us to identify and confirm that it is the ureter and you see the ureter low distal most ureter collapsing and then you can put on color to see the jet which will follow the collapsing of the lower ureter, distal most ureter so this is how you can trace the non-dilated ureter confirmed by the occurrence of peristalsis so by this you can see the calyces the pelvis the ureter there which is collapsed and it is filling up after some time you confirm that that is the ureter similarly the mid ureter collapsed and then it is filling up and similarly the lower ureter it is collapsed and it is filling up so the peristalsis of filling up and collapsing confirms that we are looking at the various parts of the ureter and uh, this is the distal most ureter with the color doppler you see the ureteric jet from the ureterovesical junction so now you can see the ureter and you see the peristalsis the various parts so it is now better for you to appreciate that is the ureter it will collapse you see the mid ureter that is the lower ureter you see filling up and collapsing okay now similarly you can see the upper ureter which went away fast we will see again and then you see that is the upper ureter collapsing so this is how you trace the ureter so now you all will agree that you can see the non-dilated ureter and also trace it now coming to the urinary bladder the protocol is with the patient supine and with a full bladder so that only we can see the bladder and make a sagittal sweep it will scan and then make a side to side sweep and then turn the transducer 90 degrees make a transfer scan and make a up and down transfer sweep so that you scan 
the entire volume of the bladder. So that is the sagittal sweep in the suprapubic region and you see the corresponding video and the transverse sweep you can see the corresponding video in a male patient. So full bladder is required. Now you see the empty bladder so you cannot study the empty bladder. So the bladder has to be full to study the bladder as well as structures posterior to the bladder. So this is a sagittal scan. So in the male you see the sagittal scan and the transverse scan and you see the bladder as a fluid filled pyramidal or oval structure and is filled with a cupola fluid and the prostate you see in the male and uh, the prostate also is pyramidal in shape with medium level uniform echoes. And then transverse scan you see that when you make a transverse sweep you also see the prostate and the seminal vesicles. Now seminal vesicle depending upon the abstinence sta stage and the age it may be thin like this in a child and it may be uh, empty and then it is full with abstinence. So that is a normal seminal vesicles and normal urinary bladder. Linear Seminal vesicles are seen as linear or long oval echopoa structures of variable size a, depending upon the age and abstinence and there may be some compartments. The urinary bladder measurement is done by using the volume tool taking the length that is cephalocardal and then AP diameter and the width in the transverse scan. So the length and the AP diameter taken in the sagittal scan and the width in the transverse scan and using the volume tool you will get the volume and um, the residual urine normally is taken to be 20 to 30 cc. Prostate measurement again using the volume tool, the length and uh, AP thickness in the sagittal scan and within the transverse scan and you get the volume normally is 20 to 30 cc. The size uh, increases uh, with the age and uh, when you want to study prostate and seminal vesicles in detail it has to be by transrectal ultrasound. So this is the female sagittal sweep from side to side you see the bladder and the uterus and the transverse sweep from above downwards you will see the bladder, uterus and the ovaries. So that is the sagittal sweep and the transverse sweep to see the entire volume of the bladder. Now coming to the urethrovesical junction, on either side you can see the urethrovesical junction. Now you see the distal ureter runs obliquely to join the bladder. So to see the urethrovesical junction you must see the distalmost ureter by taking an oblique scan along this plane. And uh, when you do that, so that should be the placement of the transducer to look at the urethrovesical junction and uh, you see the the bladder, the distal ureter and that is the urethrovesical junction. Similarly, when you put a color doppler, you can see the distalmost ureter with the jet from the urethrovesical junction which identifies the urethrovesical junction. Then turn the probe for the left side urethrovesical junction. So this is the technique for the urethrovesical junction with um, color doppler with the uh, color power angio and color doppler both. So you can see the collapse of the distalmost ureter with the ureteric jet which is normal. So ureteric jet, visualizing the ureteric jet is useful in certain situations which we will be dealt with in the pathology lectures. Now coming to the trigon of the urinary bladder, how to identify the trigon. So trigon is the triangular part of the base of the urinary bladder between the urethrovesical junctions of both sides and the internal urethral meatus. So this is the triangular area of the urinary bladder uh, which has uh, special uh, tissue and special origin embryologically. So that is the trigone. So how to identify the trigone? You identify uh, the internal urethral meatus in the male, in the female and uh, the urethrovesical junction. So the area between the two and uh, that is two urethrovesical junctions and the internal urethral meatus, the triangular area is the trigon. Then uh, the urinary bladder besides sagittal and transverse scans in many situations a coronal scan or a high frequency scan are also necessary not to miss a diagnosis. So coronal scan High frequency scan using a high um, frequency linear probe helps us to see the anterior wall of the urinary bladder better. 
the coronal scan is done by placing the transducer in the right if suppose you want to see the left lateral wall of the bladder you, you have to put that probe in the right iliac fossa and are parallel to the body and then make a sweep to look at the now this is the probe in the right iliac fossa the beam is almost coronal to see this part of the bladder left lateral wall of the bladder better and make an anterior posterior sweep so that you see the entire wall so this is the video showing the same movement so from the right iliac fossa you make a coronal sweep so that you see here this will be the left lateral wall of the urinary bladder so this is useful in certain situations i will show one illustration of this now this is a patient presenting with hematuria you see the uh, sagittal scan transverse scan the urinary bladder is normal and the high frequency scan also shows that the anterior wall of the bladder is normal so here you see the coronal scan shows um, mass in the ipsilateral side so this is um, from the same side when you do a coronal scan you see the mass or you may see a mass here in the opposite wall so that is brought out only by a coronal scan but it is also uh, brought out well with in a post void scan so post void scan is also important not only for residual urine some mass lesions or some pathology become obvious either on a coronal scan or in a post void scan or in some anterior wall lesions in the high frequency scan now one warning regarding the bladder in a female particularly now here this is a sagittal scan in a patient with acute suprapubic pain and uh, you see the uh, with suprapubic tenderness so this is uh, is it urinary bladder but here in transverse scan sagittal scan and transverse scan it looks like bladder but uh, if you have a doubt because it is tender and uh, you have a doubtful bladder here when you have a doubt repeat after some time or you catheterize and uh, repeat the uh, scan so that uh, if it is bladder it would have emptied and you will think that this is a cyst and the clue here is the bladder uh, thin bladder seen here so when you have a doubt then you can repeat after some time we will see the increase in volume of the bladder or catheterize to empty the bladder and see so this is a transfer scan you see the bladder on either side better and this is actually a cyst it is not a urinary bladder and cyst ovarian cyst which has resulted in torsion now endovaginal scan in a lady and a transrectal scan in in uh, unmarried women and uh, males can be used to our advantage to look at the distal most part of the ureter when it is not seen well on abdominal scan and you can identify by the urethrovesical junction by the jet also so here you see the endovaginal scan and you see the ureter distal most ureter and which is slightly dilated and you see the calculus better seen by endovaginal scan or transrectal scan and here another example of uh, a dilated slightly dilated distal most ureter the obstruction is due to a soft tissue mass in a diabetic patient it is a sloughed papilla causing obstruction in the lower ureter so that is well seen by either endovaginal scan or press another example of a lower ureteric stricture you see the dilated ureter and the narrowing smooth narrowing of the distal most ureter indicating a stricture whereas here you see the dilated ureter and you see an irregular mass filling the distal most ureter indicating that it is a lower ureteric tumor carcinoma now endovaginal scan or transrectal scan can also be used um, to evaluate the base of the bladder and uh, in here three examples of carcinoma of urinary bladder you can look for the infiltration of the serosa here it is not infiltrated here it is infiltrated i mean uh, infiltration of the mural uh, infiltration which is seen here and here but still the serosa is intact here if there is serosa involvement that will be seen better so the level of invasion of tumor can be better assessed by either endovaginal scan or a transrectal scan another uh, example you see the endometriosis of the lsc scar in involving the urinary bladder at the interface which is better seen by endovaginal scan you see the uterus 
and bladder and you see them irregular mass at the level of LCS car with loss of interface between the uterus and the bladder and actually irregular mass protruding into the bladder giving a diagnosis of endometriosis of the urinary bladder. Now then coming to the perineal scan. Now before going for the perineal scan the wall of the urinary bladder thickness can be assessed uh, when a partially or a moderately full urinary bladder where uh, we have to measure the volume of the urinary bladder it should be around 150 cc at that time you measure the bladder wall thickness it should maximum it should be 2 to 3 millimeters then coming to the perineal scan to study the urethra so this is the schematic uh, of the pelvis and perineum in a female so when you place the probe here and do a scan the scan will be like this so that is the probe and you see the pubic symphysis and uh, you see the bladder and the urethra so that is the bladder and the urethra and then you see the vagina so that is the vagina and um, this is the rectum so that is in a child and in an adult you see the uh, pubic symphysis and you see the urethra as an echopore structure just beneath the pubic symphysis from the urinary bladder and the vagina the mucus uh, in the vagina gives it an echogenic appearance with echopore walls and finally the anal canal so this is the normal appearance of uh, perineal scan of urethra and vagina in a female and uh, here some examples of abnormalities so this is uh, the urethra and adjacent you see a cystic area urethral diverticulum and a proximal urethral diverticulum filled with milk of calcium uh, as seen here as an echogenic mass and in periurethral abscess is seen that is the urethra and this is the vagina in between you see a tender uh, fluid collection with enhancement so that is a periurethral abscess and we can do a 3D to look at how far uh, the periurethral abscess encircles the urethra. Now this is a perineal scan in a female with stress incontinence and uh, you can see the scan at rest and with uh, valsalva you see that the bladder herniates collapses into the vagina that is a cystocene and this is the video showing the prolapse of the bladder into the vagina so that is a cystocene and there is a uh, rotatory descent of the urethra so this is uh, assessment of pelvic floor is a separate lecture so perineal scan in the of the urethra in a male so that is how you place the probe and uh, so the image will be like this it will be returned like this where you will see the pubic symphysis bladder the posterior urethra and the anterior urethra so that is the posterior urethra anterior urethra in a child yeah. and uh, here you see the bladder and uh, you see uh, the uh, structures that is the pubic symphysis bladder the rectum the urethra the posterior and the penile urethra marked in the image and um, you can actually do the uh, sonographic uh, micturating cystourethra and you will see the bladder contracting and you see the urethra being filled with urine distension distended uh, with the fluid which is seen on ultrasound so this is sonographic mixture eating sister urethrogram which is useful in the diagnosis of posterior and anterior urethral valves that we will see in the abnormal section now penile urethra also can be uh, seen by uh, high frequency scan now this is the scan of the penis uh, from the dorsal aspect you see the corpus spongiosum here so the urethra will be in the corpus spongiosum this is a uh, axial scan of the penis this is the two carporo cavernosa and the single corpus spongiosum on the ventral aspect the urethra will be within the corpus spongiosum we can do it on the from the ventral aspect also we will see that now this is a patient with uh, dysuria and uh, bladder and urinary tract was normal and when you do uh, because of the severe dysuria scan of the penis from the ventral aspect you see the corpus spongiosum with the urethra and in the urethra you see a calculus impacted there which was cause, uh, the cause of dysuria so there is a calculus in the penile urethra the scan is done from the ventral aspect now this is a patient who presented with uh, again dysuria and hematuria and uh, here you see uh, linear uh, echogenic lesion from the bladder it enters the urethra and that is the transverse scan 
and when you do a scan of the penis you see the linear echogenic structure in the urethra so that is the dorsal scan you see the lesion and this is the axial scan this is the corpus spongiosum inside you see the lesion this was a foreign body it was a blade of a leaf of a plant which was introduced by the patient himself that is a foreign body now penal urethra can also be studied by gel urethrogram distending it with the gel so you place uh, the nozzle of the lubricating gel uh, on the anterior urethral meatus and then squeeze the tube so that the gel will enter the urethra and distend it this is a normal urethra so that is the lumen and you see the walls seen very well and this is the longitudinal scan and the axial scan you can see the video showing the procedure you see the gel moving and distending the urethra so very well seen so what are the pathologies we can pick up you can pick up a stricture that is the urethra and you see the narrowing with the wall thickening that is the stricture of the urethra as seen on the retrograde urethrogram on x-ray and uh, here this is a patient who had total cystectomy for uh, carcinoma of the urinary bladder presented later with urethral bleeding and a gel urethrogram shows the distended urethra and an irregular mass from the ventral wall of the urethra and which on color showed flow indicating that it is a, a recurrent tumor in the urethra another case of urethral bleeding that is the tarsal scan the two carpal cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum in the place of urethra you see multiple cystic areas in the axial scan in the longitudinal scan again you see linear tubular structures which uh, on gel urethrogram again ventral scan confirms the same which on color showed a flow indicating that it is a hemangioma the same which on uh, gel urethrogram is better seen you see the urethra and you see the hemangioma of the walls so this is a hemangioma of the pineal urethra which has resulted in urethral bleeding thank you for your attention <music>